We saved a $500 Porsche Boxster from the junkyard and are now converting it into our version of a 1960s inspired vintage supercar. Last week we got a bunch of metal shaping done and this week we're going to continue that and also get our hinge made for the front clamshell. All that and more in this week's episode of Project Jigsaw. We went to Lowe's looking for the pieces we needed for our clamshell hinge and found nothing that we wanted. So we went to a local metal supply place, found wow. a nice beefy piece of aluminum tubing, <laughs> which is gonna be the base for our new clamshell hinge. It's gonna live right in there. Once we get our clamshell hinge made, we can move on to more metal shaping. But first things first, we need to get this thing up in the air so we have some room to 3D scan the underside of the front of this car. RevoPoint sent us their brand new Miracle Pro 3D scanner, which we're gonna use today. I'm excited for the scanner because it's all in one. It means I don't have to plug the computer into it to scan, I don't have a cable in the way or anything. I heard pretty good things about the scanner, so we'll see how it does. Also, AE Sub sent us a bunch of scanning spray to try out too. So, without any further ado, I'm gonna get scanning. Spray this first. What's nice about the scanning spray is supposedly after you spray with it, it'll evaporate four hours later and be completely gone. Let's see how this does. All right, that came out pretty good. And the plus side is I can actually see the holes I need. That one there. And that one down there. This is the idea here. A little bolt in these four spots underneath the bulkhead there. Come across to the front. Hinges right there. Well, let's go cut it out on the plasma cutter. I see that Tony is down there continuing his work on the uh, fender from last week. There should do it, I think. Take it hot. I bet it is. Hand what do hammer. we know about hand hammers? They work very well and they're on you all the time. <laughs> I don't think that's what we know. Ow, ow, I think it's hot this time still. Ow. <laughs> I completely guessed the speed in this thing. And look, there's no slag in the back. He loves to see it. Let's see how this line goes up. Oh, dude, the holes align perfectly. That scanner is great. That uh, I need a 13. You know what tool I really love? Well, it's not my toolbox. Wait, what's that? This is the tool I love. Stubby 3 8 ratchet. Yeah, they're great. So I had to cut our bracket down to three pieces because we didn't have a piece of plate big enough for uh, cutting it out once. And also, if you think about it, it's a big U, so it would be a lot of waste. Let's get the other one cut out and the centerpiece cut out and tacked together for now. That shape looks like skinny Texas. You know, I was kind of wondering the same thing as I was uh, cutting it out earlier. You know what it actually looks like? What? If like Texas and California like banded together and made a state. Definitely <laughs> a combination and that would definitely happen someday. So. Texafornia? Texafornia. <laughs> right. You couldn't have gotten any closer. I know, look at that. Look at this. I mean, there's still some waste here, but right. we'll, we'll use that space for something else later. Dream of Texafornication. better when you're lying on the floor and I'm holding the camera. Yeah, well, how the turntables, huh? Just like a puzzle fits together perfectly. Like a jigsaw puzzle. 
Oh man, how many times can you make that joke? I don't know, but it's before just, it gets old, unlike the younglings. We haven't hit that. We haven't hit that point yet. Yeah. to hold it i think uh that'll work i just want to get tacked together so that it'll uh stay in the right plane we'll weld it later probably maybe maybe not we'll see tag you're it it's your turn to make brackets yeah i see that you uh Spend a little bit more time in your temp fender top here. It looks so much better. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of shrinking here with our pull max. A little bit of stretching here. You have to call you Sigourney though because that's looking a little ripply up there. <laughs> yeah, it is. Did IQs just drop sharply while I was away? Now I gotta watch Alien again. <laughs> All of them. We 3D printed these bushings to uh, isolate the layers of hinge we're gonna make here. Think that work for you? Yeah, I think that's gonna work perfect. I don't know if we want to put this tube below the bracket because then when the aluminum tube goes over top, it will be lower than the front of our car. And I don't like that idea. Me neither. Now, the only concern with going here is like you said. It's a little high. We don't want to get up into our airflow going into there. Uh -huh. so the center here is going to get cut out too. It's not going to stay. Well, that, for oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So then That's it won't for matter. Alignment. Little pro tip here. If you use excess material to align two hinges, then they'll be in the same plane. So when you weld it together and stuff, it'll actually work. Whereas if we don't have anything keep tying them to each other, they could be a little bit of wonk and then it'll just be terrible. We'll be bending our whole clamshell trying to get it to open. Yeah, we don't want that. like that nice bushings are just a little loose might have to reprint those a little bit tighter but with a little bit of grease they'll be fine for now yeah. chances are we're gonna melt them anyway <laughs> chances are high so now we need our cradles the idea now is to weld a bracket to the steel tube that bolts to the carrier and then lop off the center piece so they're independent from each other once they're aligned and then we can unbolt that and slide it out of the way to get the clamshell off. Cause right now, if we had that be solid and welded, uh, you'd never go get the clamshell off unless we made the aluminum side unbolt from itself. And that'd be a lot more work. We so, don't wanna do that. Back to the computer. There we go. That should work. Kinda looks like the Discord guy. He does look like the Discord guy, doesn't he? Yeah. Ooh, it'll fit. Guess I need to refill the uh, coolant on the table. It's a yeah. little low. Why don't you do that? Because I have to carry five gallon buckets from the bathroom across the entire shop back and forth to fill it. That's way too much work. When I was younger, I used to have to carry buckets of water up the hill to my house. Was that like to and from school or? No, it was before and after. <laughs> now we just got to fish those was there pieces snow, out. Was there, was there snow both ways? Tony Blocks the Light Miller. My code name is Eclipse. Oh, so that was you the other week. That yeah, was. I made an appearance last week all across the country. Ironically, Tony was also the baby that was the son in Teletubbies. I am way too old for that. <laughs> there you go. There it is. I gotta clean them up and... Weld them. Weld them.
There we go. It's like a Nerf bar. We can put a hook our plow onto that. This is a pretty scene cut to plowing with this, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we made the uh, the sleeve here out of aluminum for the sole purpose of being able to weld like struts from that to the shell we made here. So we're gonna take all these aluminum bits and bobs we have left over from making our framework. We're gonna turn them into struts that we're gonna weld to the body of the framework and go to the collar we made that's pushed to the steel hinge, essentially creating a hinge point that we can then open and close this clamshell without issue. And we need to figure out where we're gonna take our struts here and weld them to this framework because we don't even have our center intake fully designed yet, nor is it even here to build around. So we wanna make sure our framework kind of stays within some kind of tolerance there. I made up one. Yeah. This we're rigging what, it. This is how we do it. This is the real car building experience when there's just two dudes doing it. And uh, we wanna keep moving. That big oh. tubing is really taking up the heat. Yeah, I also dipped my tungsten, which didn't help. <laughs> also, I probably ruined our bushings. Yeah, they're melting currently. We knew we were gonna print new ones, right? Yeah, or we're gonna melt these into place and then they're gonna work great. Turns out that our bushings are the same thickness as this filler rod. So we can replace our melted bushings with that. This melts because that Schedule 40 is just too thick to weld and tack without it getting too hot. So that causes it to miss the line a little bit, which would be a problem. Plus I need to reprint those bushings anyway because they were not quite just right. So not a huge loss. Let's see how far this gets us. Ah. Can't get the plastic out, so I'll just uh, cut a new one. I think because the opening is going to be low and wide that this shouldn't really get in the way. And if it does get in the way, we can always just paint it black and you won't see it. It's like it's in technically because um, I really want to go to this point. And right. plan C, if we have problems, is we can just cut it off and put it somewhere else later down the line. I'm just going to roll with it. Now it's real solid, even with your semi-loose roller bearing in there. Awesome. I want to keep welding all these tacks, but I don't need to yet. So I probably should, Good but I idea. want to. I really want to. Um, I always see like things that should be welded eventually. So I keep rolling through and then I go, I shouldn't have done that. We tack things for a reason. We tack them so we can then easily remove things if they're not right, but I want to weld them. Our bearing fell apart. One, two, three pickup sticks. You played that right back in the 60s. Uh, <laughs> nope, wasn't around in the 60s, Ryan. Here we go. Look at that. Yeah, our bushing's definitely a little loose. Right, but other than that, will it flip? It, Just gotta watch our- Yeah, we gotta go around the yeah. part there for now. Look at that, that's sick. There it is. need to stop before I tear, take out our headlight. But there, I mean, they're straight up and down. That is really cool. This backside here, which would be like, you know, behind the wheel and the body work, that's not gonna go with the clamshell. It's just, you know, part of the, the mold right now, or the uh, form tubing, mold form, whatever you call it. Um, so that's gonna like be bolted to the car basically. And then we'll have like a split off right here. So it can peel away from that. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Now we just got a uh, 3D print new bushings. Lop off the centerpiece, and we have a hinge. We have a hinge before that, but yeah, we'll have a better hinge when we do that. All right, now it hinges. We gotta finish putting some skin on this guy, which means our 
headlight bucket area is the next to go. That means we'll have a whole top with the clamshell roughed in. Yeah. It's very roughed in, but roughed in. <laughs> Ryan, you know what this looks like? What does it look like? A shield. Oh. Uh, we make a lot of shields on this channel. Yeah, we do. <laughs> get, get it back. <laughs> He's beating me for all the edits I did to this yeah, video. <laughs> I've heard some bad things about your editing this time. I was gonna say what it does look like to me, pop-up headlights for a yeah, for Yeah, looks exactly like 944 <laughs> headlight covers. It's not enough of that. Use your knee, your thigh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Use your toes, Tony. I gotta get stuff out of my pockets. Ink saw and phone. Expecting and you to pull like a gerbil out of your pocket or something. Hey weirdo. Here's your mic pack. Yeah. What did that mic pack do to you? What's that's that? Our, that's our brand new one. <laughs> You're just banging it against the panel. I don't respect filming equipment. I'm aware. Actually, it's a little more than a 24. Oh yeah, that fits terribly, Tony. Well, it fit better before, and now uh -huh. I've got to make it fit again. Well, I don't have clamps on. Here, let me put a couple of clamps on there, and it'll fit perfectly. There you go. Yeah, honestly, I think it needs bent. Yeah, I think it does too. While Tony is working on his panel with the English wheel, I'm going to do the same, but with the planching hammer, to show how we can get the same outcome with different tooling in the shop, and also to keep moving because you guys don't want to see Tony walk back and forth 30 times while I wait to make the same panel. There's two guys that do, but the rest of them don't. Yeah, exactly. So for this week, we'll keep it simple. You know uh, who you are. We love you. <laughs> so you keep working on your panel there and I'm going right. to fire up the old planching hammer. But it was so quiet in here before. Yeah, well, that's what I do. We just filmed like 10 minutes and my mic is muted the whole time. For once it was me, not Tony. I'd say that looks pretty good. Finishing this one came out pretty, pretty decent with the planching hammer. I had it on a pretty high pressure setting with the air pressure. So you can see all the individual hammer marks. But to that effect, I've seen a lot of comments asking why we're using such thick gauge aluminum. Um, part of it's because this is like the main structure for the car. Cause it's, you know, it's an entire front clamshell, not just a flare. We're not matching it to and an OEM panel. And two, there's a lot of extra room to uh, weld and grind and sand before it gets too thin. Yeah, much easier to weld. The only real disadvantage is a little bit of weight yeah. and extra money. Yeah. But in the end, it seems like it might be harder to work because you know, you're working with a thicker material, 
but that's negligible, I think, in what I've experienced so far. Yeah, well, this, this still moves faster than 19 gauge steel, that's for sure. Yeah, yep. Much faster. And, uh, yeah, and as we move towards finishing it, I, it will give us a lot more leeway for all the other things. I agree. How's yours going, Tony? Good, yeah, I think good. The, I mean, the, the weird overlap that you've got here, you know. Yeah, there's that, a huge overlap. All that's getting trimmed off and all this is getting trimmed off. And so just trying to get the interface to be right at, yeah. the, at the center. It's a guesstimate at this point until we trim it yep. because it's not gonna be the right plane, but yep. otherwise and, we're both pretty close. I, I think we both did the same thing, which kind of let this dive off down here because mm -hmm. in our wire form, there was a step here that was the end of this valley. Yeah, the little job. We didn't build that into the structure, so nope. it shouldn't come down and meet the structure all the way right now. Nope, that's for sure. It's gonna be floating above it. I wish we had some more clamps here because I can't move away we from this corner <laughs> right now. We literally went to Lowe's in the beginning of this video and forgot to get clamps. Yeah. What's a project without more than one trip to Lowe's? That's true. <laughs> Lastly, also, we're not gonna spend a ton of time on these panels because they are going to get punched out for the headlights and get reshaped around that anyway. We just need a good base to work off of, which I think we're getting pretty close to already. I know that some of you were upset that we're using 993 headlights that are round. This is something more aggressive. I think this fits the bill better though. That's it. We're, we're going for 1960s and more. I mean, you take the GT40 out of it. Most of the cars of that era were using round headlights. Mm -hmm. And so we want to fit into that. Yeah, anything that's more aggressive or angular or like more Ferrari, like new Ferrari like, too modern for us. Not for this project. Maybe a different project though. This isn't the only project you're gonna be doing. <laughs> Not the only project we've done. Uh, go down a little bit. Rotate it counterclockwise a little bit. Go down a little more. Up a little more. Down a little more. Up a little more. Down a little more. <laughs> Now keep in mind, these panels are oversized by a good bit and need to be flanged over and whatnot. So they fit kind of crappily. However, <laughs> woo! Oh, you like that? Way to talk it up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> gotta, gotta keep it real. Yep. That's what we do here. That, that's the problem when you're showing a work in progress. You gotta explain these things because it's gonna get a lot better than that. Oh yeah, the end product is gonna be minty. We got some huge steps done this week. The front clamshell is officially mounted to the car at some level. We can hinge it, it opens and closes. We'll get to finishing the hinges later on. We gotta reprint those bushings, we gotta cut out the center tube. That's for later. For right now, this thing is finally mounted to the car. We also got some more metal shipping work done, so the top of the clamshell is very roughly roughed in. You can see what it's gonna look like now. I think that about does it for this week. We'll catch you guys next week for some more Project Jigsaw goodness.